What's up everybody, it's me Molly D and I'm back at you with another video. Today's video is actually my first ever attempt at doing an on-screen how-to or walkthrough type tutorial type video. So guys, bear with me and be patient with me as I stumble through this process. But the only way for me to learn to be a better creator is to do. So that being said, today's video is going to be, I'm gonna show you guys how I prepare my artwork for my laser machine. So it's really gonna just be about Adobe Illustrator, how I prepare my artwork in Adobe, and how I transfer it over to Lightburn. And this is actually the order I'm working on for a customer, so I'm gonna try to show you my workflow. It's not the best, most streamlined workflow, but it's my workflow. And it's it works for me, I have more of a freestyle. But uh, yeah, so let's get into it. So right off the bat, on this screen, what you're going to see is basically what this represents is a typical file that when I'm working on artwork, um, if be it hood props, door props, any of my acrylic works, fender badges, anything that I'm doing on the machine pretty much starts just like this in Adobe Illustrator. This artboard is the same size as my um, laser machine and also represents the same workspace in Lightburn so I can lay it out exactly how I need it to be. And it's just, it's all like a seamless workflow for me. So um, I'm not resizing. What you see is basically what's gonna be on Lightburn and vice versa. If you look to the left, the Chevrolet, the best year ever, that's a hood prop. And that's an approved hood prop. The customer approved that design. So typically this is kind of a mock-up. They wanted a clear hood prop with silver Chevrolet um, logo and the best year ever. So this is for a 1969 Camaro. I think this this particular logo is as closest to that era's uh, Chevrolet logo. Cause as you know, if you guys are into cars, Chevrolet, since they've been around so long, they've changed their logos over the time. So this particular logo should represent, should be close. So all you car gurus and uh, Chevy traditionalists, don't be too hard on me, but I think I did my research and I try to get it as close as I can to 1969 Chevy logo, bow tie logo, or Chevrolet bow tie logo. But anyway, this is basically an approved mock-up. So <sighs> technically this job is done for me. All I literally have to do is just change this color from gray to black, reduce the um, weight on my outline, and I'm done. I can send that off to light burn and get ready to print. That's typically how it works. So even if I'm working on a mock-up, I'm pretty much designing a mock-up to be laser ready. So there's a few minor tweaks that I have to do. Normally I will just save a copy, a rendition of this before, make everything look final, in case the just in case the customer wanna change some things or whatever like that. But anyway, I'm gonna show you guys how I will make it look from this artwork to this. So this is blanks. These represent blanks here. So this is a door pop blank and these are hood prop blanks. These blanks are specifically designed for old school cars. Um, I have bigger strike and latch holes. And also I um, temp typically use nine mil acrylic because it's thicker. So usually the old schools are heavier doors, all metal. So that's kind of a design thing. Usually on the newer cars, they have like shocks and stuff and I can get away with quarter inch acrylic. So yeah, right off the bat, I'm going, so what I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need the Chevrolet logo and the best year yet. Those are gonna literally go here, here. But I'm also gonna need the Chevrolet logos for my hood, my door props. So let me grab that and I just wanna group this hood prop, this door prop, sorry. Same thing, grab this, group. That way, that's one full piece. All my files pretty much starts like this. I have a blank workspace and these are like my blanks. So in my design portion, I have a cut and design layer. So literally this is the design. So this is the design layer. So pretty much I start on design layer. So it depends on what I'm making. If I'm making Challenger gas caps, you know, fender badges, hood prop, door props, it depends on what I'm doing, right? I'll grab that blank and slide it over here. All all these props and shapes and stuff was designed by yours truly. I pretty much have to make this look like this. So on the artwork, I have to add a lot of strokes or outline the artwork. So again, I'm gonna need Chevy. I'm gonna go ahead and copy. I'm gonna need Chevy for this door prop and Chevy for that door prop. So that's basically the layout of my artwork, but Instead of doing like double the work, I just literally take, I'll take the Chevy logo and I'll go to my objects. I'll go to path. I'll go to offset path. 
my door props and hood props, I tend to do a 25, a quarter inch offset. And for this particular logo, I'm gonna stay miter because the Chevy has like points and slants and straight lines. So I'm gonna say, okay. And uh, usually for this, honestly, I could have just selected the actual logo itself, just the outline of the logo and it would have made things life a lot easier for me. But that's tend to like, usually I just grab the whole artwork and do it. So, so I'll just go and unite that now that's the actual offset layer so then i'll just um usually cut that and then i'll that way it's not because usually if you don't do that it's going to be a part of that particular artwork and i want it separate so then i just paste it in back so that's command b and then from there i'll just clean up any unknown so anything any white space or any unwanted lines and stuff i just clean that up this one's fairly simple it's not too much going on let me uh, zoom in clean Actually, I do all this work from my laptop. I need to I need to go and buy a mouse. Actually, I'm gonna go to do that today when I'm done with this video. I'm gonna buy an actual mouse for my Mac. Oh, so I'm like old school, man. But anyway, so that's that. And then I'll grab that outline and then I will swap the fill and stroke or you can just do Shift X. For my machine, my sh machine recognizes blue as the cut line. So it's gonna, that's the line that machine's gonna recognize to cut in the laser machine. So I changed all my strokes to blue. There you go. So that's that piece. And then I typically just, um, that's it. So then after, after that, I'll group it all. So that's grouped. And same thing with best, the best year yet. Let me just drag it out of the way so it can be a little more clear. Do that. Same thing, you go to object, path, offset path same thing i'm gonna go quarter inch offset on these because uh that's just what i typically do for hood props and door props and for this particular one i want to go round because i don't know i just didn't really didn't didn't care for all the jagged edges with this particular font so then you go and unite and same thing i cut and then i paste in the back and then you do shift x and there you go and then I go blue, then I double click on my outline on the stroke and I just clean up. So anything you don't want cut, you have to clean up. This, I'm, I think I'm gonna leave that alone for now. We'll see how it, how it plays out once I unite it with the actual piece here. So another, another tip I, well, I have copies of it here, so I literally don't need to, um, I don't need to copy this, but sometimes if I did some type of modification to it or something special, I would copy these blanks and set them off to the side just in case I need to like go back and do something different or I had to I made a mistake or another customer wants to order another prop same car same make same make same model but they want to put different artwork so I have that there so typically so the cut lines are blue and my engrave lines or should I say fill line is going to be black so I go in I used to do the magic wand and just grab all the, the gray. Once you isolate that group, so a key point, just make sure if you have a group and you just wanna do like a magic wand, just isolate that group by double clicking on that. And then now it's isolated. Now I can do the magic wand and I can just literally grab all the gray and I'll go to my color, fill, palettes, and black, done. Same thing with the Chevy, the Chevrolet logo. I'll isolate that group, magic wand, grab it, fill color palette, black, done. So now my artwork is ready to unite to the blanks. So I'm gonna take the best year yet. Actually, sorry, let me go back one. Forgot to group this. So usually I like to group it first. Then I drag it, drag it over to the hood prop blank. And same thing here, make sure that's grouped. Then I drag this over to the hood prop blank. But then I also, since I need two more of those logos, so I'm gonna just hold down option, select, drag, Chevrolet. That's how you just do a copy. Option, select, drag. And there you go. So this one, so the reason I have it grouped because then I can just grab everything and it's easy for me to align if I have it all grouped. Because if I don't have it grouped, then the, the offset might get all wonky on me. And also typically the artwork for my door props, I like it to be at five inches. Well, five inches high. So that's typically a rule of thumb for me. I just usually have it at five inches high. 
And yeah, so I like like this for instance. Now, then, now the next step for me is it's a lot of it could be redundant, but for me, this works for me. People might have better workflows or different workflows, but for me, this works. So then I ungroup everything. So I'll just make sure I ungroup everything here, and now I can select the line, the stroke of the blank door prop, shift select the stroke of the Chevy logo. Then I go to my Pathfinder and I click Unite. And now that's one, one piece. Same thing, ungroup, ungroup, grab the strokes, Pathfinder, Unite, done. So this, and then I take it all and I group it again. So I'm gonna group it back, group it back. That's done. So the Chevrolet door prop is ready to go. So all my pieces, I have my, my IG, my Instagram tag on it. Just Instagram hash, you know, Molly D made it. That's just how, that's just a way you know that it's an authentic Molly D piece because everything is hand painted. I don't have one of those fancy um, direct UV, direct to substrate printers. So I, I just hand paint everything. So everything you get is gonna have a personal touch to it. So that's the door props, those are done. So then the hood props, same same deal. So first I need to line it up. So again, you will basically align center and then I'll grab it and see kind of like where I want it all. I think I want this moved up a little bit. Move this up a little bit. And then there you have it. Actually, let me try it. Let me just align it one more time just to make sure I'm good there. Okay. And then same thing. Then you just ungroup. 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 Actually, no. Let me undo that. Command Z. Undo that. And then now I select all of my strokes for this particular hood prop group. Stroke selected, stroke selected. Uh, actually, hold on, let me backtrack a little bit here. I wanna move this down some. I'm not gonna actually use this, this piece. This is just, I'm just doing this for um, demonstration purposes. I actually already completed the file. Um, we got it ready for the machine, but I just wanted to show you guys the process. Print, um, so now, so okay, now I'm ready to select the stroke, select stroke of the hood prop link, select stroke of the Chevy logo, logo, select stroke of the best year yet art piece. Then I just go hit Pathfinder, Unite, and just kind of look it over, see if I want to do anything. Ah, I'll leave that. And then basically group it together and I'm done. So from there, from there, you literally just take it, copy it. Actually, let me undo that. I copy it, not cut, copy it. Then I'll go to my layers. Then I'll go to my cut layer. I'll un unhide it and then basically lock the design layer because I no longer need, need that anymore. Then I'll paste this over into the cut layer. And then there you go, I just kind of align it up see kind of how I will lay it out on a machine. This is kind of a representation of how I would literally just send it to the machine and lay it out. All right, so there we have it. So basically it's ready for light burn. So from here, I will save it. I'll go to file. I already saved this. So I'm gonna save as, and I'm gonna go 69 Camaro at, and I'm gonna just do an O2 because I don't want to mess up the other file that I had. O2, and you go save. Okay, actually, let me just make sure I get rid of all this other trash and garbage or whatever. Cause that will, that if you don't do that, that will import into Lightburn and it could kind of mess you up a little bit. You might be like, hey, what's that? Or where'd that come from? But another thing I like to do is go to objects, path, and clean up. Just make sure you clean up some stuff here. All right, so. Let's double check a few things here. You have, okay, 22, 22, 11 and a half inches wide, 23 inches tall. 
All right, so let me just go ahead and save again. Make sure it is a different file or two. Okay, file, save. And now I'm gonna go ahead and open up Lightburn. Then I go to file, import. Then I just find my file, 69 Camaro 02, open. And there we have it. See, this is what I was talking about. Like I could, I did not see this, this file I couldn't select it. It may have been locked in my layers, but I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. That's trash. But uh, either way, here it is. Cool thing, it's already grouped, just like how it is in Adobe Illustrator. It's already grouped, already grouped. And it doesn't really matter how the layout is because most of the time, I'm not gonna cut on a full sheet of acrylic anyway. It's gonna be pieces, so I'll have to like literally just design it that way. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, see how much this is gonna be? That's gonna take 37, 37 minutes to do. This one's gonna, then you just kind of preview your files. That's gonna take 19 minutes to do. Gonna take 19 minutes and the, you can look, but do not, please do not touch. It's going to take eight minutes. So this is the, the preview monitor, so it's pretty dope. And then over here is the fill. I just select, so basically for my fill, my etching part, I like to do speed 350 and power 300, 330 for power. Usually I have different colors. So I have, sometimes I'll go 25 and 20. So I kind of like have depth and give it like texture, but um, I'm just gonna do a deep fill at 30. And then this is gonna be nine mils. So I usually cut it at um, the speed for nine and then 70 is the max power not max power but I just go at 70% of the power and that's pretty much it and then what I would do here I would just save this I would go up to file save I'm gonna go save as and then I'm just gonna do same thing I'm gonna just go um, six nine I'm gonna go six nine underscore Camaro and I'm gonna just go underscore O2, just, just so I have, and then I'm gonna save it. So it's, it's linked, this is actually gonna be saved in my Adobe Cloud. And from here, I go to my laptop that is um, running the laser machine, and then I grab it from the uh, cloud, and then I'll set it up and I'll cut and go from there. So basically, that's it. I mean, it's a pretty, that's my workflow. So there you have it, guys. Thank you, I appreciate you guys taking the time and watching and stumbling through this with me. But uh, I got through it, so um, to the next one. So thank you guys. Please like, comment, subscribe, whatever. All that good YouTube stuff. But uh, yeah, have a good one. And until the next one, Molly D out.